This is a 59-year-old postmenopausal woman who is poorly compliant with follow-up. She's obese, diabetic, and doesn't really come to her physician uh, very regularly. She did actually present for her annual physical exam and visit, and at that point had reported um, uh, some back pain and uh, headaches, uh, occasional hip pain, and was referred for her annual mammography. She has never been pregnant. She has no family history of cancer. And on exam, indeed, there was a palpable breast mass in her left breast with palpable lymph nodes. On clinical workup, she had laboratory analysis done that evaluated uh, CBC, complete metabolic profile, and uh, all her labs were normal except for an alkaline phosphatase that was elevated at 230 uh, with the upper limit of normal and that lab being 140. The breast imaging did indeed reveal uh, a suspicious irregular appearing mass in the left breast with suspicious axillary nodes and an ultrasound guided core biopsy of the breast mass and lymph nodes unfortunately revealed invasive ductal uh, carcinoma, ER negative, PR negative, HER2-3 plus by IHC. Because she had reported headaches, uh, a brain MRI was done and it showed no suspicious lesions. A PET CT and a bone scan was also done and unfortunately uh, documented multiple suspicious lesions in her spine and pelvis and several pulmonary nodules. She was not uh, symptomatic at all with cough. A biopsy of one of these larger pulmonary nodules, in fact, did confirm the diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer to lung and bone, ER negative, HER2 positive. Her ECOG performance status was one. So in terms of her treatment and follow-up, she was started on paclitaxel, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab and completed about six months of chemotherapy and then developed um, persistent neuropathy that started to interfere with her activities of daily living. So the chemotherapy was dropped and the trastuzumab and pertuzumab was continued. Um, and she had follow-up imaging uh, at several time points that did show a good response to therapy. There were no FDG avid lesions on her PET scan and her bone pain actually resolved. Denosumab was also started to reduce the incidence of skeletal-related events. Further follow-up imaging did show a response to therapy. Um, at 18 months, she actually developed progressive disease when she reported a dry cough and uh, imaging showed progressive bone and uh, multiple pulmonary nodules. So at this point in the second line, she was started on trastuzumab and tansine or TDM1 and tolerated this treatment very well. Follow-up imaging showed a response that lasted for about nine months. And at this point, she developed a headache and increasing bone pain. Uh, imaging, including a brain MRI was done and unfortunately did document multiple um, brain lesions. There were, there were three lesions. They were all less than two centimeters without any edema. And she was treated with stereotactic radiosurgery and then was initiated on neratinib at a dose of 240 milligrams, uh, six tablets, and capecitabine. She was given prophylactic loperamide. 